corn is a crop that was used to seal an agreement for peace with our Indians on Thanksgiving Day. Today it is contained in everything in our supermarket, from corn on the cob to high fructose corn syrup, adhesives to plastics and the fuel we use in our cars. Corn can be found in our hair. Without the domestication and cultivation of corn, none of this would have been possible. But with the increasing obesity in the U.S., are we better off than we were? Mayan Indian Empire was one of the most awe-inspiring civilizations in humankind. Mayan Indians lived in 7000 BC and are the ones who innovated corn. Indian corn was originally believed to be made from two crops, teosinte and pod corn. Today, it is believed to be made from starch granules and opal phytolins. Corn was so important to the Mayan Indians that they worshipped the corn god called Gomkex, the god of maize, who protects the farmer's fields from animals. The Mayan Indians grew corn with beans, squash, and sometimes buried fish to return the nutrients into the soil. Beans, squash, and corn eaten together make a complete protein meal. The Spanish explorers named Rodrigo de Jerez and Luis Torres were amongst the first Europeans to discover the existence of corn. They also brought some corn and tobacco back to Cuba as a gift to their friendly natives on November 2nd, 1421. Another European explorer was Christopher Columbus, who sailed across the Pacific Ocean and discovered America in 1492. The native Indians introduced him to maize. He brought some maize to England. Europeans in the early 1500s called all grains corn, so when Christopher turned with this grain, they called it Indian corn. Indian corn became a valuable food for trade. One of Sir Walter Riley's men gave this account off the coast of Virginia in 1584. The Indians sent us diverse kinds of fruits and vegetables. Their corn, which is very white and fair, and well tasted, and groweth three times in five months, only they cast the corn into the ground, breaking a soft turf with a wooden pickaxe. In 1846, Robert L. Reed hybridized a new corn called Yellow Dead Corn. This corn was taller and produced a greater yield. 95% of the corn grown today is Yellow Dead. Its stalks can grow up to 7 feet tall with its 9 inch double ears filled with 16 rows of dented kernels. It was a better corn for production. Yellow dent corn has a thick outer skin that does not soften when cooked. It must be soaked or ground for processing. This corn is found in most of the foods we eat, including those containing high fructose corn syrup. Corn syrup is found in many of the processed foods in the fast food restaurants and in soft drinks. Today, most of the yellow dent corn is genetically modified. According to Monsanto, by inserting one or more genes into the seed, the GMO yellow dent corn is a superior corn crop that allows farmers to get more out of each seed, resulting in higher yield with fewer pesticides. In a 2009 study released by the International Journal of Biological Sciences, researchers found that genetically modified corn is linked to organ damage in rats. Scientists are not sure if the same thing could happen to humans. Corn is an important renewable resource. Corn plastic is another environmentally friendly item. The resin, known as PLA, is formed into containers and packaging for food and consumer goods. This trendy plastic is biodegradable and a renewable resource for our environment. Plastics today use an estimated 2 million barrels of oil a day in the U.S. Instead, corn plastics use 200,000 barrels of oil a day. According to the Renewable Fuels Association, 
A gallon of corn ethanol today delivers as much as 67% more energy than is used to produce it. Ethanol is an environmentally friendly fuel that, when blended with gasoline, reduces carbon monoxide emissions from vehicles by 25-30%. to 30%. Ethanol production has continued to expand geographically. Ethanol biorefineries now 14.3% of the fuel used today and is now operating in 26 states, bringing economic opportunity to tens of thousands of Americans. And with growing oil crisis, corn might be the answer. Corn syrup is almost exactly as sweet as granulated sugar, and it often replaces it in recipes. The advantage of corn syrup over sugar is its resistance to crystallization. A lollipop made with corn syrup will retain its smooth texture, while a cane sugar lollipop may turn into a hardened rock candy. Corn syrup is said to be bad, but does it make you obese? High fructose corn syrup might not be completely responsible for the nation's 6 million overweight children, but it's a big problem. High fructose corn syrup adds calories without n nutrition. Dr. George Bray, who served as founding president of the North American Association for the Study of Obesity, points out that between 1970, when high fructose corn syrup is introduced, and 2000, when average consumption of high fructose corn syrup is 73.5 pounds per person in a year. The prevalence of obesity more than doubled from 15% to almost one third of the adult population. Obesity among children aged 12 to 19 increased from 4.2% in 1970 to 15.3% in 2000. Bray said that the implications for our children's future are clear. We know that if it's not caught early, one in three of these overweight children who grow into overweight adults. Increased risk for type 2 diabetes, coronary heart disease, stroke, and early death. According to Michael Poland, the author of Omnivore's Dilemma, the government only subsidizes farmers to grow unhealthy crops. These subsidies were intended to bring down the cost of food the consumer during the Great Depression. Today, when it costs more to buy fresh broccoli than candy or a Big Mac, our government policies have to change. Is refined cane sugar just as bad as high fructose corn syrup? According to fitness expert Brio Personal Training, sugar is refined from either sugar cane or sugar beet. High fructose corn syrup is made from refined corn. Does it even matter if one is slightly less harmful than the other, when they are both about the worst thing you can put in your body? But there is hope. Obesity is largely preventable through changes in lifestyle, especially diet, says Dr. Robert Bray, who in 2004 has called for removing soda machines from schools and reducing portion sizes of commercially available sodas. Through this research, we have concluded that corn has influenced many lives throughout history and continues to change and have a huge impact in our society. New Country Corn Flakes! New Country Corn Flakes! Oh, they won't will when you pour on me! Three,